This is BaseballGuys.com, and I'm Ray Flowers. As you can tell from the Giants paraphernalia behind me, there's a couple of big Giants players in the news, and they're going to lead off our report today at BaseballGuys.com. First player in the news is Tim Lincecum. He wants $13 million through the arbitration process. The Giants have counted with $8 million. No matter what happens there, Lincecum figures to have a great chance to beat Ryan Howard's $10 million record for arbitration if the process goes that far. Uh, you have to think the Giants might just bite the bullet there and at least split the difference uh, this year with their best pitcher. Uh, two Cy Young Awards and your first two complete seasons in the big leagues probably going to get you a win in arbitration process. Further on top of that, uh, King Felix, Felix Hernandez of the Mariners, and I know you can't compare this arbitration process to just signing a contract, but King Felix signed a five-year deal worth $78 million with, for the Mariners uh, yesterday, actually, or agreed to it. He hasn't signed it. Uh, that averages out to $15.6 million annually. You look at what he's done, you then think Tim Lincecum, $13 million. Giants would probably be wise to sign Lincecum to a long-term deal if they can afford to, to make it happen. These arbitration processes year after year after year are going to cause Tim Lincecum's salary to be awfully high if they don't agree to a deal with him. Second giant in the news is Benji Molina. Long link to the Mets. Everyone believed that he would be signing with that club. Uh, unfortunately, for the Mets, didn't happen. But Molina, tired of wanting the two-year deal that the Mets weren't going to offer, spurned the Mets, went back to the Giants, signed a one-year deal with the Giants for just over $4 million, leaving the Mets in a total lurch. They have been tied to players like Yorvit Toriaba now, but there's a, a big line of thinking that the Mets will just go with what they have. That means Amir Santos will uh, bat against the right-handed pitchers with Henry Blanco hitting against lefties. We'll have to wait and see if that works out. To me, that's not a backstop tandem that you're going to use if you have a playoff aspirations. As far as the Giants go, this means Buster Posey probably will start the year in AAA and not uh, with the big league club. I've been saying all offseason, don't count on Posey to start the year with the club. I didn't think the Giants would let the youngster go with it. They're just not sure about his defense at this point. A little bit more seasoning in the minors is great for Posey. Look for him to make an impact in the second half and for him to be the Giants starter in 2011. Next player on the list is Johnny Damon. Report's been leaking out that he's now, according to a close associate, considering retirement. That report has been somewhat refuted. We're all talking back channels thing here. Nothing definitive. Damon's never come out and said this in the press. Bottom line is he's probably a little frustrated. Thought he'd get a big money deal. It's not happening. He will be this year's Bobby Abreu, a veteran who signs a one-year deal probably for low dollars that goes out and has a really strong season. Damon's still looking for a place to land. The Braves still apparently are in the mix. We'll have to wait and see how that situation plays out, but don't look for Damon to retire despite the reports to the contrary. A player that wants to return from retirement is Jim Edmonds. Apparently he approached the Cardinals and said he's very serious about resuming his career at 40 years of age despite not playing since 2008. Other teams now apparently are in the mix as well, thinking that Edmonds might be a good platoon partner uh, in the outfield. We'll have to wait and see where he signs, wait and see how he does, but it appears that Jim Edmonds, the human highlight film who plays some of the best center field we've ever seen, will be playing with someone in 2010. Another player coming back from retirement is Paul LaDuca. He signed a deal with the Rockies. It's a minor league deal. The Rockies obviously have Ionetta and Olivo at the big league level. Doesn't look like there's any shot for LaDuca to, to make it to the bigs with the Rockies, but if he proves himself, has some effective work in the minors, maybe he'll convince another team to give him a shot. His play at the plate uh, and behind the dish, actually, really, really went down in the last few years, so don't look for him to make a major impact, but it's a nice story if he can make it back to the bigs. Ben Sheets, a player trying to come back from injury, threw for just about every team in baseball yesterday. Uh, he had a 55-pitch outing where he reached 91, 92 miles an hour on some people's radar guns, broke off a few of his curveballs, looked pretty good, gave a lot of people some confidence that he's healthy, or at least healthy enough to give a, a one-year contract to. Sheets is apparently still holding out for something like $10 million with all those incentives for a one-year deal. Can't see that happening. There was a report floated that he might, might accept $7.5 million dollars. Boy, do I wish I had continued playing baseball and I could throw 90 miles an hour. Uh, bottom line is, Sheets looks like he's on the verge of signing with someone. We don't know who that is, but yesterday's outing went a long way toward waylaying teams' fears that Sheets wasn't going to be physically able to perform this year. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. Keep an eye on that situation because Sheets, when healthy, is probably one of the top 20 starters in baseball. Next player on the list, Carl Pavano. Signs a one-year, $7 million deal with the Twins. Apparently, the Twins aren't sold on the health of guys like Kevin Slowey. The, the performance of a guy like Francisco Liriano, because $7 million for a small market club to Pavano seems like an awful lot of money. I know he won 14 games last year. I know he threw 199.1 innings, but that was his first season of over 100 innings since 2004. A lot of money for a small market club to throw to a guy who's had a ton of arm issues throughout his career. David Bush, 
with the Brewers. Apparently, you don't have to be a very good pitcher anymore to make millions of dollars in Major League Baseball. Bush submitted a salary figure through the arbitration process of $4.4 million. The Brewers, $4.125 million. Bottom line is, no matter how you look at it, Dave Bush, 5-9 and nine with an area over 6 last year, is going to make over $4 million this season only in America. Next pitcher on the list, Brad Lidge. Had elbow surgery, he had knee surgery, a lot of concern about whether he'll be ready for the start of the season. He came out and said he believes that's still a realistic possibility. At this point, not quite at all sure that that's a situation that will play itself out. If you're going to draft Brad Lidge in fantasy leagues, make sure you draft Ryan Madsen as well to cover yourself. Lidge is going to try to be healthy for the start of the season, but after all the problems he had last year, the ERA of over 7, the whip of over 1.8, pays to be very careful with how you evaluate Brad Lidge heading into this season. We need to see him perform on the field, at least I do, before I give him the full thumbs up. Octavio Dotel is another closer in the news. Well, potential closer. He might be headed to the Pirates. The Pirates are trying to work out a financial deal for the, the hard-throwing righty. Uh, looks like that is on the verge of happening. He'll probably be given the first crack at ninth inning duties. Could have a nice season, kind of something like a Solomon Torres did years ago for the Pirates. At least that's what they're hoping for in Pittsburgh. Two final players in the news. Robinson Tejeda signed a one-year $950,000 deal. Who's Robinson Tejeda? He's a pitcher for the Royals. He had a great run to finish last season, uh, posting an ERA of, in the 2.8s with more than a strikeout per inning over his last six starts. Not a big name, but if you're in an AL-only fantasy league, keep the name Robinson Tejeda in mind because he could end up being a nice late-round sleeper for you. And finally, Dexter Fowler. He's thinking in the future. He's not even anything other than arbitration eligible for years, but when he finally gets to that negotiation stage, he wants the best guy in his corner. He signed Scott Boris to be his, his agent. Uh, I'm sure Scott Boris is already working up a profile that says Dexter Fowler is the best player in baseball since Ricky Henderson. Bottom line is, Scott Boris, I want him as my agent. He's the best at what he does. Even if you don't like the man, he gets the money and the numbers for his clients. I'm Ray Flowers. This is BaseballGuys.com, and I'll talk to you later.